in our organs and organ systems, we mentioned that our organs are going to be made up of tissues, and that each tissue in the organ will perform a very specific function. So let's look at your heart for a second. So in your heart, we have muscle tissue, we have epithelial tissue, we have connective tissue, and we have nervous tissue. So we've got them all, right? So the muscles for contraction, the epithelials are going to line the heart chambers and hold the cells together. The connective tissue, of course, is going to help the muscles receive the information they need and also help the heart be elastic and do good contractions. And then the neurons themselves, the nervous tissue, will actually regulate those contractions. So all of these tissues are going to have to work together to form the heart as an organ. If we look at your small intestine, same sort of thing. We've got epithelials, connective tissue. We've got two layers of muscle that we have to think about. And there's going to be nervous tissue as well. You don't think about regulating your small intestine, but your nervous system certainly does. So connective and epithelials, muscle layer, and within this, we're going to have tight connections to nervous systems for contraction. If you're going to have two layers of muscle, we're going to have to deal with pretty significant contraction features there. And you notice they've got the muscles drawn so that it looks like they're going in two directions. They are. We'll talk about this more in your digestive system. Your small intestine actually contracts around, so it squeezes and pinches, but it also shortens. So it's kind of like an inchworm. So it's going to squeeze and shorten and squeeze and shorten. And we'll look at why that muscle configuration is so important for doing that. Each organ system is made up of several organs with many functions, typically. So when we look at an organ system functioning as an entire unit, the organs in the organ system are what going to regulate how it does that. These are the major organ systems we look at. We actually look at eight major organ systems in you. The skeletal and muscular systems could be considered separate. We often put them together because your skeleton's not going to move without your muscular system. Digestive and respiratory, we often put these together. We'll talk about them separately. And we'll actually tie your respiratory system into your circulatory system for gas exchange. Your urinary system, of course, we've got to deal with waste removal and so on. Integumentary system is your skin. So why is that an entire system? We'll look at that and think about that. Lymphatic and immune system, so all of your defense mechanisms. Nervous and endocrine, very tightly bound systems as well. So your nervous system is regulating pretty much everything going on in your body. Your endocrine system is the only thing that can override the nervous system. So we'll look at that and what role that plays. And then, of course, reproductive system. Because for evolutionary things, we need to, of course, think about the next generation. When we want to look at any of these particular organ systems, it used to be that you'd have to do an operation. You'd have to cut someone open to look inside and see what was wrong. But with today's medical imaging processes and technologies, we can certainly take really good peaks inside you without cutting you open. That's an advantage. X-rays, of course, have been around for a long time, but are really only good for hard structures. So if you break a bone, we're, of course, going to give you an X-ray. If you really break a bone and tear up tissue and so on, we may actually start to look in the direction of magnetic resonance imaging or MRIs. And when we look at an MRI, what it's actually taking advantage of is looking at a three-dimensional image and it's focusing on how the hydrogen atoms actually behave in water molecules. And this is a bizarre concept, but we end up focusing in on 
you being a water-based organism and how the molecules are behaving in that environment that is you and we can come out with some pretty fascinating pictures so in this case looking at this torn meniscus in a knee and that it would have to be repaired hopefully endoscopically so you don't have to have major reconstructive surgery um, but that tear we would have never seen before and you would never see it on a regular x-ray we can look at advanced techniques now looking more at computerized techniques giving us better resolution images looking at differences between normal and abnormal tissues things like a PET scan so actually looking at metabolic processes occurring in particular regions in your body but some of the best images now coming out are actually combination images of things like CT scans and PET scans together to give you the most information possible here's an image of a combined CT PET scan and in this case looking for tumors so the PET scan is looking for metabolic rates high metabolic function and the CT scan is giving us some background image or orientation images for our structures here and when we look at these bright white spots these are actually tumors so it's looking for cell division high cell division and growth rates and from there we can start to diagnose the fact that this tumor has metastasized moved to other locations and we need to consider other treatments for cancer in this case